And Heidi, ho everyone, welcome aboard for this Tuesday, the 27th of July. Goodness gracious, Ignatius, where the hell do they go? The days I'm talking about, of course, they just fly by, do they not? Okay, um, bigger day today. We've got um, not me strutting all things what I do, but uh, we're going to talk to Lloyd as he joins us and will be through the month of August, as I've told you guys. We might have a chat with him uh, in a short while to uh, enlighten you guys as to what he's doing with his trading and uh, and what he's going to share with us, during, well, with you guys during the month of August, whilst Ash and I have our annual sabbatical, kind of. Um, let's get into it, shall we? We will go with, oh, I'm over here. Let's hope I'll share the right screen. Screens all over the place. Okay, with any luck at all, you'll be seeing my uh, pound US dollar chart. Good Tuesday to you too, Paul P. And uh, if that's the case, we can get on with the job here. Now, we're in pound US dollar from yesterday, right? And I'm inclined to move stops to entry. At this point, we've broken through, but we haven't gone too far. Um, daily chart telling me, daily chart's telling me we'll probably get a daily pivot test today and maybe bounce. Mm. Where's the crystal ball? There's the crystal ball. That's what she's telling me. She's telling me we've come back in. We're looking for a retest here. I better, I better keep this where it is for now um, because it's vulnerable. If I move my stops, I think it's quite vulnerable to today's uh, intraday price action. So it's a no from me as far as moving the stop loss at this point. Um, in terms of today, should we trade the breakout today? Hmm. 115 pips, I think I measured it. Yeah, 115 pips. We've got to get to two and a half to one. 115, we've got to go to there. That's okay. To get one to one, to get two and a half to one. Uh, what did I say? 115, 230 plus 70, 60, say 290. That's there. Okay. That's not too dusty. 115, 200. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll go with that. Um, I think we've got room to take profit on both sides. So why not? Now, this is going to complicate the charts, of course, but that's okay. Righto. Uh, we are going to put a sell stop in. Let me get the levels. Although this computer behaves, gives me the right levels. 137.16. Really? Oh, that's right, because that was yesterday's, wasn't it? So it's exactly the same entry for the, for the short at 137.16 and we're looking for here's my order box over here looking for a very small stake as usual on this this testing 137.16 yeah The stop loss will be above there by five pips. The high of that bar is 138.32.8, so 138.33 plus five. 138.38 is our stop loss. And there's your cell. 138, 38, and 16 will be the buy, right? Exactly the reverse of that. Uh, 138, 38. Let's buy stop. Yeah, 
and 137.16 is the stop loss. Okie dokie. Right, so all are covered. All are, all the all the orders are in the market now. Again, if you're joining us for the first time, and I can't see exactly who's in the room, in particular on YouTube, uh, this is a test system of trading a breakout on uh, pound US dollar at the open of London session, which has now just transpired. So, what it is, uh, we're trading long at the high of the range, the, the range being yesterday and current uh, current range today, or current high of today in this case. And we place a buy order there with a sell order at the low of the range. And whichever is triggered, we cancel the other. In this case, you'd be probably hoping that long is triggered given that we've uh, got very close proximity to an untested weekly pivot. So not an ideal place to enter the market, I've got to say. We shall see how that goes. That is about it. Um, if we need to manage that, I'll update you as the show progresses. Okay, we do have Lloyd in. Before we uh, introduce Lloyd, I'll just go through a couple of things, update some positions, an order that I placed this morning on Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie, we're trading short, and it's based on a potential lower high off a, uh, well, whatever you want to call that. I'll call it a, a little tweezer top for now. That'll do me. Uh, you might want to call it um, an evening star or whatever floats your boat. Don't really care what, what name you put to it. Um, it's been followed up by a potential lower high. And if we put our entry beneath that bar and our stop loss above it, which is what I've done. I don't know why I can't see anything here, probably because I've got a black screen and I'll have to change the colour scheme, but that's okay. So the entry level is there, 59.57, stop loss 60.62, which is basically the bar with a couple of pips added here and there. And TP1, we're going to take at 59.03. If you're interested in following this trade, 59.03 is pretty much bang on last week's weekly pivot and just before the low of that bar. I think that's strategically correct and uh, and hopefully we'll get there at some stage, if not in this session, which I, mm, you never know. The other orders, uh, Euro Pound, we have been triggered short on Euro Pound. I think that happened overnight. Yes, it did. Um, just below entry at the moment. I'm fancying that we'll probably get a daily pivot test here today. So if you, if you are in this, uh, expect some drawdown to the daily pivot, I would imagine. But I, I do like the shape of this. I went through it all yesterday, and there's a 100 different reasons. There's lots of, g'day, Lewis, there's lots of um, confluences here that are telling me that this is going short, and uh, I'll stick to exactly that. Let's see how that goes. But as I said, I do expect that we'll potentially get a daily pivot test. If we get worse than a daily pivot test, um, I'd be surprised, but <laughs> that doesn't doesn't mean anything. Me being surprised because it happens frequently in uh, in trading these markets. I can assure you. Pound US dollar, you know about uh, Kiwi Swissy. We've also placed an order on Kiwi Swissy. Kiwi Swissy playing long and not my favourite. I've got to say because it has got a little green body. But again, uh, it looks very, very similar to an upside down version of Euro Aussie to me, where we have got a double bottom, a clear double bottom, and I won't say a higher high, um, but that's not part of my criteria. All I'm looking for is a higher low to trade. And if it's got a red body, all the better. This one doesn't, but I'm still trading that bar. Getting above DR1 there just as an added bit of security. Um, and we are putting the stop loss underneath the candle, less a couple of pips. So really playing two things here, bottom, double bottom, off the bottom, well, three things really. So off the bottom of that descending channel that you can see there, which is pretty clear to me. I did have it tighter. I had it tighter down here, but it, it didn't really look as good on the downside. Now it doesn't look as good on the high side, but 
we do have two tus two touches, and that is the criteria that I use. Two touches either side, and we're good to go. So we're bouncing off the bottom of that as well. Um, there's not a really strong horizontal level there, but there is a level there. And we are, as always, looking for a re-entry into a range. That's pretty much what we've got, both the, uh, the sending channel and the rectangle, and the higher low may well be appearing as we look at this chart. If not, uh, then potentially we won't be taken into that trade and that's all fine by me. Uh, what else have we got? Euro Swissy. We're still in Euro Swissy. Gee whiz, you'd, you'd, really, <laughs> you'd really like this to get a rig on, wouldn't you? Um, potentially now we've got another close below this range. And maybe that range is extending a little bit. Um, today may be the day, guys, that this actually kicks some goals. I haven't moved my stop loss yet on this. Maybe I need to do that weekly pivot step down for three days, three weeks in a row. Um, I'm inclined to move my stop loss to entry now. If this breaks to the highest, it's still in a great spot, the stop loss. Sorry, the stop loss is well below entry. Okay, <laughs> I thought that was the entry. It's in the right place. Leave it where it is. Um, because we can withstand then a return to the top of that range and that looks likely. So we'll leave our stop loss where it is well into profit. EuroCAD I can't show you because I haven't got it on this chart, but that's still purring along nicely, I think. Uh, tighter, tighter, tighter. I'm going to quiz you guys again in a minute. Yeah, I can't even know where the stop loss is. I haven't even got that account open anywhere, I don't think. Maybe I have. No, I haven't. Uh, stop loss is up here somewhere anyway, well out of the range of where we currently are. And have I come to the end? Swissy, Kiwi Swissy. We spoke about Kiwi Swissy, didn't we? Yep. Euro Aussie we've spoken about. Pound we've spoken about. Euro CAD we've spoken about. Pound Kiwi is the only other one that we haven't spoken about. And maybe today is the day where we get back into profit after... Um, being in drawdown for what, nearly two weeks? Maybe, maybe we go back in, who knows? Uh, this is a monthly chart trade, guys. So we'll be hanging on to this for a while, I, I would imagine. Now, what I'd really like to do is get into some profit so that we can actually erase some of the swaps that we are suffering. The swaps that we're gaining on, on EuroCAD, we're giving back to the market on Pound Kiwi at the moment. So we, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on that. We'll have a look towards the end of the week what we need to do with that because um, I won't be here for the month of August, which is, of course, next week. Speaking of which, and that brings us up to date, let me say a warm hello to my good friend, Lloyd. Hello, buddy. How are you doing? Hi, Joe. I'm still in front of my computer doing testing for my show tonight. <laughs> Oh, what show? What show is that? Tell everyone what show you do tonight. Uh, no, it's just a fortnight show whereby uh, I, will, I will be sharing indicators and how uh, it can be used. Yeah, so sharing, uh, I'm testing uh, from I think two weeks to now. Two weeks before to now, I was sharing the London's breakout. Then tonight, I'll be sharing the US breakout. It may, may not necessarily be a, a profitable way of trading, but uh, yeah, I just want to share. Maybe some other brighter folks out there might take some inspiration of it and turn it to something profitable. Okay, you, you're talking a London breakout. What what are you looking for there? Because we're also trading a London breakout. We're testing a London breakout, testing it forward. What what um, are you trading? Well, no, uh, it, it is not a, uh, it's not my trading. It's just that when I look at an indicator, somehow sometimes the indicator pops up at me how it should be traded. So uh, it is just a simple hypothesis. Yeah, most of the time it's just a simple hypothesis. So for the London breakout, the hypothesis was that uh, if during the Asian session is quiet, so it can define as about like, uh, somewhat like 30 pips and below of movement in the Asian session. So during a London session, if it breaks out of the Asian range, so I mean a quiet London breakout is really Asian, uh, is really a Asian range breakout, then gotcha. uh, it might be a viable trade. Okay, so you're testing that at the moment. You haven't released it as a, um, a trading system as yet. No, the, 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 
the London breakout was already released uh, two weeks back. The, the result wasn't actually fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think overall it was kind of slightly profitable only. Yeah, so tonight what I'll be sharing is the uh, US session breakout, which is really the breakout of the London trading range. Okay, interesting. I might have to watch a recording of that because I'll be sound asleep. That does sound interesting. So, of course, we trade the London breakout every – well, not we don't trade it every day. We uh, make a, a value judgment on it at the moment, and uh, we're still in yesterday's. But um, today's not triggered. We're not trading the uh, Asian breakout as you do. We're trading the breakout of the previous, well, 36 hours, I suppose. It's not even that. Um, the previous day plus what's already happened thus far today uh, is the breakout that we're currently trading and taking just taking everything off the table once we get two and a half to one. The reason for that is uh, we've tested that backwards and that seems to be the sweet spot for the London breakout. We got a, quite a few that were, you know, five, six, seven to one, but more than, more than not, uh, it was way less than that. And, of course, some of them are outright losers, so... Um, we found the sweet spot around about the two and a half to one mark. Anyway, that's just uh, a fraction of, I guess, what you'll be sharing with the guys when you uh, when you take over from us next week. What 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 are you actually trading at the moment? I know you you're a student of charts and you change. <laughs> Seems to me the last time I spoke to you was completely different to what you were trading. And I know you take a, a big interest in the indexes these days. What are you, have you got one system that you're trading or concentrating on at the moment, or is it a, a mixture of everything? I, I think it was the multiple system that I'm trading. Okay, it's just uh, over the weekend, I just concluded my currency strength cost. Yeah, so that's, uh, it's just using one indicator to determine the direction of trades. And then there are about, I would say, three methods to enter yeah so one is based on reversal the other is a normal momentum trading uh the third is actually a four hour trading system whereby it's purely mechanical in the sense that the analysis was the, the direction to trade is determined by the currency uh indicator currency strength indicator and the entry is also determined by another indicator so i don't really actually think much about it that's a good thing when you don't have to think. I agree with that. Um, that's kind of why I I have a, a set thing that I do every day. And if it's not there, it's not there. I don't have to worry about it. And, and you know, I'm find, finding it really, really interesting trading just daily charts and, uh, and weekly charts at the moment. Sometimes they've been monthly charts. I'm finding that quite relaxing, which is something that I need at the moment because I'm working hard on, on my other business. But I, I do miss intraday trading, I must say. I, I miss the, the challenge of it because it is a challenge, intraday trading. Um, but, gee, it's very relaxing trading end of the day, I must say. Mate, I, I've got to say, and I've, I've said this to everybody that I, uh, that I talk to when I'm talking about trading and you, and if you could share your screen with us, right, or, or it can... Now, when you talk, you probably come up anyway, as I understand it. Your, what do you call that? Your mantra? Mantra? Well, it's a quote. Be inspired by other traders. Don't be influenced by them. I oh, love yeah. that. Uh, this, I, this was not by me, but I, I, I stole it from someone else. But really, is a, how do I put it? I'm going to sound like I'm blaming you, Jeff, but I'm not really blaming you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really because after the first and second trading retreat, I think that was what, five, four years back. Yep. Yeah, too long ago. Really, yeah, it's too long to remember, but it was really a fun thing. Uh, what happened was that I was still a new student that, you know, with the plethora of uh, senior traders that comes in, of course, uh, at 10, we'll, we'll always try our best to emulate you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the, the emulation wasn't successful because ultimately, Jeff, you are unique. Uh, so it's Paul, so the others are unique. So it doesn't really fit into my trading personality. So uh, I think it took me stupidly long while to realize that. Uh, and, of course, after some realization, uh, it, it starts to turn to, yeah, I'm actually inspired by you, but really I shouldn't try to copy your point by point. Yeah, because personality-wise, we are just that different. 
One hundred percent. I actually, I, I was speaking about that yesterday because I was in by myself yesterday, and uh, and I went through pretty much everything I do to set up the week and and how I come to the conclusions or considerations that I come to, and I quoted. Well, I tried to quote. I've tried to quote that a hundred times. I must take a snapshot of it um, because I love it. It's so so true, and. I, I exactly the same as you at the trading retreats where I've been exposed to quite a few traders over the years. And uh, like you, I've, in the first case, tried to do everything they do. And one, one thing taught me not to do that. And it was a big loss of money, of course, as it normally is. I, uh, I tried to do exactly the same entry as this guy on a, I think it was a four hour time frame on pound yen. And his entry seemed to be a bit wrong to me or, or I tried to get, I can't quite remember the circumstances, but I got into the trade and he didn't. And it immediately went south and I lost, I think a thousand and fifty dollars which was a reasonable amount of money back then. That's, you know, 13, 14 years ago. And I was pissed. I was so peeved. And uh, he had, I had addressed him, if I, if I was in the same country, I probably would have throttled him, but it wasn't his fault. And at the end of the day, he settled me down and he pretty much said exactly what that says uh, in a roundabout fashion. And I've never, ever forgotten that because you can, you can have the best trader on the planet sitting in front of you who will analyze the chart completely differently than you will. But if you try and adopt that person's exact system of trading, uh, unless you are twin brothers or exactly the same in personality in particular, you're going to have dis different results just because. And I can't give you an, a, a reasonable explanation why but it is pretty much based on your your personality and your risk profiles all those sorts of things come into it so yep agree 100 percent. so if you're very busy getting ready for tonight's show uh, i won't hold you up too much uh, unless you want to hang around that's fine have you got anything that uh, you're interested in trading at the moment uh, yeah since i'm on the uh since i'm on the chart i can share with you all what uh I'm actually my analysis over the weekend. What has happened thus far? Would that be alright? Yep. Yeah, great. Yeah. So, uh, I think over the weekend, I was sharing that I'm looking at two charts. That I'm trading, looking to trade. One was Aussie Swiss uh, short. Yeah. So if you if, if they recall, the analysis was that Aussie Aussie index was weak, I was yep. strong, uh, and Swiss was also strong at then. Kinda, kind of. So this was the analysis that I've given over the weekend. Uh, been triggered. Yeah, so you can see that uh, it was a high test bar of the horizontal level, so triggered. Uh, so as always, I try to keep my system uh, simple. Yeah, so looking for a 3 to 1 and see, I don't know whether I'll get it. But uh, since I've entered, I'll just try to leave it alone as much as possible. Okay. All this is triggered. Uh, the other trick that... Oh, now it has gone off. Before the show, it was kind of lingering at the entry area. The same thing was pound Aussie long, so it was a bit of a this this is a bit of a uh, overlapping trade. Yeah. So again, uh, break and retest. It did have a proper retest, so I actually entered only a uh, half percent in for this uh, long position. Yeah. So it was this uh, particular trade. So yeah, D during the upcoming show hit uh, Sunday analysis, we shall know whether I had. I have my six percent this week, or I'll be drinking plain water this week. I'll find <laughs> so, so you don't touch you don't touch them. You've just got a, an entry in a target. That's it. Yeah, most of the time it's this way. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I will actually manage a, it a bit more if uh, there's a important news coming or if there's a very clear cut that. Uh, uh, so in this case, if if it's a long position, if price nearly gets to my target. Uh, so something like this, if it gets to my target, but comes down and give me a lower high instead, then I'll actually shift my stop loss to the last swing. Yeah. That will probably yep. be the only time I manage it. Other than that, I try to leave it alone as it is. Cool. I, I like it. That, 
I think it was you who told me that uh, no matter what I do, I will never be smarter than the market. Then I just leave it as it is. <laughs> so true, isn't it? I, I forget all those things that, you know, they're in your mind and uh, you bring them out when it, it seems that it's suitable time. And I, I always say to the guys in this show and pretty much every everything I've ever done, it's not it's not the scheduled or program um, teaching or, or tutoring that you do. It's the stuff that comes out when you when you're actually faced with a, a circumstance and you can actually respond to that. And that's I guess the um, the key to being able to trade properly is you can actually bring it to mind when it's needed. And uh, oftentimes that is needed, in particular when you're managing trades. So, yeah, 100%. And I, the Wave Rider guys are in Pound Aussie as well. I know John is, uh, I assume you're still in it. John, I hope you're still in it. Going really well. So what are you going to tell me about the Euro, mate? Uh, one last thing that I want to share about Euro chart. Usually I don't trade. Uh, I don't take trades that's in the middle because I think that uh, they are ranging. But... Uh, if it's clear cut ranging in the sense that uh, let's look at the top chart, which is Euro, uh, the, the Euro currency index. If it's clear cut ranging, then there might be a possible play. And I think probably do next week when I take over the show, I might do a bit more further uh, explanation how I actually do the currency index uh, trading. Yeah. So in this case, when it's clear cut ranging and prices at the horizontal level at the currency index, it's quite easy to actually just pop down to the chart the correlated chart so in this case it will be euro usd so you can see that on the four hour time frame uh, what i've marked out is this is the horizontal level on the currency index so on the four hour time frame if the any reversal price action, action pops up in this case you can see that this two very nice looking uh low test bar then just feel free to jump in for the right yeah just, <laughs> i mean the, the euro index is really showing you that uh hey i'm about to bounce and price action is showing you that yes i'm also about to bounce then yeah kind of just jump in for the right most of the time it should work out i'm not saying 100 percent of the time but i mean you work out enough number of time that i'm still training this way show me somebody who's got a hundred percent system mate and i'll show you a lawyer <laughs> i'm still hum hunting for that favor me <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that buddy <laughs> You'll be you'll be waiting a long time, but I know that you're earnest in that quest. So uh, I wish you all the best. I really do. Um, now tell me, we've got uh, Shukri coming in shortly, and I don't know if he's in the room at the moment. I don't think he is, but he'll be coming in shortly. Are you uh, are you trading cryptos? No, I'm not trading crypto. But uh, I mean, by this week, I will set up my first crypto wallet. I think that's with the MetaMask and the Binance and whatsoever. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah, know I, I'm I'm struggling with that. <laughs> yeah, but I thought, um, yeah, with the launch of the uh, the the charity coin, I might as well just get in for the fun of it, and then uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. I mean, it doesn't really hurt. Uh, just buying a couple of coin, holding, sticking. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand it all to be honest. Um, but. I, uh, like you, have been going through the process of uh, getting into Binance and MetaMask. And I've got a huge stumbling block at the moment because of ID verification, not ID verification. They've, I've taken all the pictures and all that sort of crap. But it's telling me that I'm under review and uh, I, won't be, I won't be verified on the intermediate level, I think it is, until the 9th of the 8th. That coin's launch then is not. That's going to be interesting to see if that uh, that pans out beforehand. Anyway, I'm fighting, fighting the good fight at the moment, trying to get sense out of it. So hopefully before before then. So, you uh, was the entry again? Yep, no trouble, Paul P. I'll do that. Um, anything else, mate? No, that's about it. Yeah, was already came in uh, prepared. Just want to pop in and say hi. Well, I'm very pleased you did, and I'm very grateful that you've uh, acceded to to keep these guys company for the next month, while Sash and I have a little bit of a break. Have a good break, yeah. One month. In the meantime, I'll try my best not to scare your audience. <laughs> I have got a funny feeling they'll be thoroughly enjoying the uh, the different 
viewpoint that you put on the markets. And certainly, I would. I I must watch the replays actually if I get a chance because um, I want to catch up with what you're doing. Love the way you work, mate. Because you're a very very hard toiler, and you you deserve every success that you get. All right, mate. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, go and get ready for your show, and we look forward to catching up. Uh, you're going to pop in on Thursday while Ash is here just to uh, say a final farewell. I'll be popping in tomorrow and Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, we'll see what Pound Aussie and what was the other one? Aussie Swissy. Yep. Are yep. uh, doing. Thanks, mate. Much appreciated. All right. See you then. Okay, that was uh, that was our good friend Lloyd, of course, who will be taking the reins next week when uh, Ash and I, as we say, are on a little bit of a sabbatical. Euro pounds getting out of the money at the moment uh, as the euro looks to rally for whatever reason, um, just because it can. Just because it can. Um, as I said, we are very, very likely to give it a daily pivot test today, and that looks to be looks to be on the way. Um, slingshot might even have been tradable, eh? That is a 30 minute chart, mm, yeah. Why not? You'd probably have snuck in. Oh, that's why not because there's the high of the day, there's your entry. No go, too hard. All right, now what didn't I do? There were 10 key reversal bars today, guys. 10 of them, and I've got to go through URL, was he right? You and Ash will be away for, yes, the entire month of August, mate. Yep, I'll still be around, um, but I'm just having a break from this show. I'll still be doing the, the daily stuff on Telegram Group, and if there's anything to update on there, I'll also be doing that, uh, but I think that's my only commitment in the month of August. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I think. Um, so, yes, Euro Aussie, let's go through that, shall we? Euro Aussie, why? All right. It all starts with something like a key reversal bar on the weekly charts, which on Euro Aussie uh, was, in fact, not there, I don't think. Where are we, Euro? Yeah, it was kind of there. So we all know what a key reverse. Yeah, no, I can't really call it a key reversal bar. I just can't um, because the rules for a key reversal bar, as you guys should know, and if you don't know, uh, here they are. The rules for key reversal bars are that you have to have the well. In this case, the high of the daily bar that we're looking at, which is no, sorry, the weekly bar, which is the, the last week's bar. Uh, is higher than the previous week, which is quite clear. The second and only other rule for a key reversal bar is that it closes on or near its low. Now, that hasn't done that, right? Um, that's closed here, which is almost halfway up the bar. So I can't classify that as a key reversal bar. What I can do, though, is classify that as a key reversal bar because it's closed near the low. And that's exactly what I got. But it's not based solely on that. And I wouldn't base any trade solely on one candle because that just doesn't make any sense. You've got to have layers. And I went through this yesterday. Now, one of those layers is this particular scenario that we've got or that we had uh, on the weekly chart. We had a horizontal level, I think, from memory. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's the monthly. It's the monthly chart as well. It's a horizontal level, right? You can't change it. So on the monthly chart, it probably looks even better. Yes, it does. So that's what we have actually bounced off. Broken range, retested that range, lower low, lower high, potential lower high. It's not there yet. Um, and I see that as a very toppy scenario, and I see this as as going further south. I think this is a great retracement to trade. So it's also based on that. It's based on the rejection bar of that level on the weekly chart. No, it's not a key reversal, but it is all. It is definitely a, a reversal bar. And it's also based on this uh, little tweezer top sitting here and a potential lower high. 
it looks at this point in time as though that may be under threat. And then if that is under threat, and if it does get taken out, then I'll likely change my my attack or my point of attack, and that will look for something a little bit better. The fourth or fifth layer of all of that is uh, the rejection of the weekly pivot. And of course, the daily pivot now is thrown in there as well with that reversal bar or high test bar. And one more layer for you is it's got a green body. Now, anything that is looking to reverse or go in the opposite direction, if you like, if it has a colour of body that is opposite to the direction I'm looking to trade, yay, that's what I like. And the reason I like that so much is because it gives me a little bit of insurance. So if the market is going to take over where it left off, as is the case here, and my entry's down here, then I don't care. But if it was a candle like that, so just put that bar there instead of this bar, right? And I probably wouldn't trade it because it doesn't give me any insurance at all because if the market takes off in the direction that it was headed, right, as it, as it did here, but then it changes its mind or something happens, uh, then my insurance is out the window. And I'm, and I'm a potential loser on the trade. So it's just an added layer of insurance that I get. So the analysis is that we've probably got, it's not probably. Cheers, Shukri, I'll come to you in a minute, mate. We've likely got a lower high here based on a little bit of a tweezer top, double top, call it what you want, as I said before. Um, I don't care what the candle pattern is called. Um, if it's telling me that there's a potential for this to go short, uh, then I'm, I'm all, all for it. Um, we've broken the highs here and we've come back and put in a lower high. And that's really the story. We haven't put in a lower high, sorry. We have potentially put in a lower high. And that's what I'm playing. I'm playing the lower high based on the potential reversal. So I love to trade reversals. I think they're the best thing since sliced bread. And if you do get fortunate enough to get a, a green colored body candle here with a, a high test bar on a weekly pivot then that's something that i just can't ignore so that's why i've placed that order there on euro aussie again uh if this high gets taken out then we reassess and we look for another lower high this this candle here might produce a lower high i don't know uh okay if the entries are correct as posted on my chart right uh, let's look at that <laughs> Sorry, Paul P. I went through a, a really long explanation of, of that, and I probably shouldn't have. Okay, so the low of that bar is 1.59595 on my chart. So what I do here is simply round that down a couple of pips. I generally just get rid of the spread, right? So the spread is around two and a half pips, and I've got two and a half pips below the low of that bar. So one, sorry, 1.59, you're right, I'm wrong. I forgot the ones. My apologies, mate. And thank you for pulling me up on it. Well, be waiting a long time for that entry, eh? So let's see if that works. Um, and 1.6062. Same applies here. 1.60592 is the actual high of the bar. So I've simply gone up um, two and a half, nearly three, well, two and a half pips to 1.6062. So the level's good. Um, it's just that I forgot the ones. And when you forget the ones, that's what I was always told, right? Pick up, pick up the one cent pieces and the and the well, they were actually pennies in those days no nobody left a penny because they're too they were too big but um the sixpences pick them up don't dismiss them because they add up right so the ones the ones are important thank you paul p for pulling me up on that right oh now listen i think that uh the crypto world has maybe just woken itself up a little bit would that be right shukri yes it does it Decided to wake up. 
Ah, this is this a thing, Africa. or is this, or is this, uh, are we based, getting based, into a, a false dawn? Based on fake news. Ah, truly. Ah, so uh, tell me more. Now you can see that the crypto market is truly manipulated. Well, one was real news, but that was more for NFTs. It was because of the fangs. Two of the fangs released a uh, very big news uh, recently, which is which is great. Uh, they are Facebook and Amazon. So Facebook's news was true. This was about the metaverse, right? The metaverse. Hey, hey, just sorry, one one. I, I was going to let it slide, but yeah, I need to be educated, as you know. Yeah. What the bloody hell are fangs? <laughs> Is the metaverse? Okay. <laughs> yeah, more more information. Let me tell you what the metaverse is. Uh, let's go here. The metaverse is a different world. So <laughs> I'm oh. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I need I need a white screen here. Let me get something white here. But uh, that's fine. So. Uh, you know, we live in a world like you live, uh, you know, you, 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 you're you giving this show here, right? Uh, and uh, uh, metaverse is actually something else. Hey, it's it's kind of like Zoom, but in that world, you know, Jeff, you have a house in the physical world, right? You can yep. also have a house in the metaverse. Look at that. And you can go there in the metaverse and you don't need to be Jeff. You can be the Tazzy devil. Ha ha. Ha 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 you Now you're, you're interested yeah. in me. So in the metaverse, you are your own uh, persona. You can have your own property and, and it's more valuable actually than the physical property outside. You can have your own furniture or whatever and you can even have this show that's on the metaverse. But on the metaverse, what happens is, is you use a lot of cryptos and a lot of non-fungible tokens. So you, uh, like Jeff, you are a persona in the metaverse. You can be the Tazzy devil. The Tazzy devil is unique. It is an NFT. And when you, when you give out shows or when you give out shows like this, uh, what people do now, you know, they can give an airdrop, you know? People like, like say, uh, I have this show on the metaverse. And I, I kind of like this. This is on YouTube, right? What do I get for liking this show on YouTube? Uh, nothing. But if this is a metaverse-based show, you would actually get a token to do that. And people have done that. <laughs> so it's 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 really uh yeah. Say that last bit again, please. You get okay. So you get nothing yeah. if you like this show. Yeah. Um, well, that's not true. You you get pestered by Ash and myself once every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> but here, like, but say they say this is a metaverse-based show. If you like it, of course, you need a crypto wallet, which is why we have a free crypto class on Sunday, right? You will get an airdrop. It could be a Jeff coin. People have done that. And you don't want to show this, right? You want to come every time. And of course, what we will ask Angel to do is, no, you won't get an airdrop in the beginning because then you'll come in and go out. We will surprise the time of the airdrop. <laughs> might be in the beginning of the show, might be in the middle of the show, might be at the end of the show. Ooh. Ah, yes. Yes. And so that airdrop here can actually be used. Just say you have a class, right? Of course, this can be used as a discount against your course. Right. Right, gotcha. or so it's W material or whatever it is. Yeah, so it's a, just a coupon, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's like clickbait, but it's good clickbait because it's kind of like, how do you say it? It, it's, it? it sticks on you. You don't want to lose that wallet, right? Because you know you have something there of value. And that, that's- Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Yep. And, and frequent you know, flyer. There, yeah, in there, frequent flyers. So in there, you can have your, uh, okay, what is it you have? You have your uh, methodologies and all that, the slingshot. The slingshot now is actually a group of collection of videos and you, and that could be an NFT and that could be yep. sold separately. Yep. Yeah. So, so yep. it's really not your series of videos in YouTube. It's more than that. Uh, it's actually put in on the uh, on an NFT, and you say, "Hey, if you want to join my class, you got to buy this NFT, which 
teaches you the slingshot in a generic manner. And when you come to my show, which is this show, which is free, then you'll understand more. Yep. Makes uh, sense. <laughs> makes sense, right? So mm -hmm. it's many, many things. Now, I don't know whether they're going to use this, but look at this. They are even going for ro Roblox may be there. They were talking about uh, the other one. They were talking about Roblox. Fortnite. Fortnite is another one. I think Fortnite is also coming out with a token. So people who play Fortnite kind of get a Reddit token and all that. So this is what they do. In fact, in fact, there is something called Reddit. Oh, I forgot to tell you about this. Uh, Reddit is kind of like, uh, it's like Telegram, you know, you can, you can discuss things there. It's, it is more of an open group. But mm -hmm. in this Reddit group, okay, let's say, okay, this is, this is kind of cool. So let's say we have the YouTube conversations, right? Or the Zoom conversations, but YouTube is better. Like, okay, this is from, uh, this is from Gary. Uh, this is from you. This is from Angel. This is from Paul. I'm, I'm seeing the names here, okay? This is from Sui. So now in Reddit, what happens if you have something like this, say Sui gives a very good comment. Sui gives a very good uh, comment and uh, I upvote it. You know, I upvote it all. Everyone upvotes it. Okay. The Sui saw something, right? So Sui says, hey, we should take a trade on this because this is this. Jeff said, oh, this is great. Everyone upvotes this. Guess what? Sui gets a coin. And that coin can actually be sold. <laughs> so, so this is how living in the metaverse is like is very different from uh, living in the real world that's why after Mark Zuckerberg announced this he did announce it someone actually uh, went and interviewed him and he released the notes I think on Friday you saw the non-fungible tokens just go up which is why I said that non-fungible tokens please separate it from crypto that's a totally different world altogether we have two worlds and I'm sure one day when Mark only two, gee whiz, that makes me feel really happy because it looks <laughs> like it looks like there's 379. And then you're struggling with world number one. Now I come and into the world first, yes. Jeff. We have two. Totally, totally. Like, Jeff, are you talking about the right world? That's a different chat room. <laughs> Please exit the chat. Oh uh, dear. <laughs> So I'm sure when Mark... I'm too old. I'm too old. For this. <laughs> Seriously. Right. So one day, I'm sure when Mark announces this again, and it is clear, then I'm sure that, uh, you know, it will go up again. And of course, you know what Facebook will use, right? Facebook is going to use their own coin, which is called Diem. Diem. It's tied against the US dollar. It's pegged against a basket of currencies. So in the future soon... Eight, you know, you, you could even be like, uh, you know, if I want to pay ATW to, to follow your course, I don't have to go in, in what I go now. I don't know what you guys are doing for payment, right? That, that, that rebrand lead link or whatever. I can pay Diem straight into the ATW account. Diem, Diem. That's day, isn't it? Diem. I don't know what that means, but Diem. Day in maybe Latin or something? Somebody yeah, will... something, right? So... It's, it's really cool. So in the future, what I'm saying that content creators on Facebook are going to be able to monetize a lot. And you can be kind of be like a full content creator. And Facebook's already announced that it's putting like 10 billion US dollars to power up the content creation. And now we know why. Now it makes sense because of this digital universe, this putting in for content creation there's going to be a digital universe where Facebook is its own world. Plus, we can interact in this coin called Diem. And I'm sure wow. that this will also include Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that also in the wallet to be able to uh, handle this. And uh, looking at what people did before, I'm sure that the content creators will be given like free credits, right? Free credits in, in Diem to do all this. So, so that's good at least the top content creators in Facebook. And that's cool. What, what does this do mm -hmm. to, I mean, we're not talking coins here. What, what are we, is it NFTs? What is it? What this, is this? this? This is like a cryptocurrency. This is like your US dollar. This is just like your US dollar. So DM is a coin. Yeah, it's a coin, but it's backed by US dollar. It's one for one. Okay. Yeah. So what does, what does that do to the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum? And 
Uh, it's it better. Do? It's better. You know why? Because now if I have Bitcoin and I want to, uh, I want to interact in Facebook, I'm going to go into Facebook and convert my Bitcoin to DM. And I can also convert DM back to Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm sure that will be there for us to be able to interact with the outside world because that's what you can do in PayPal now. Okay, so you don't think that, I mean, Zuckerberg's obviously a very yeah. sharp mind yeah. uh, and has a lot of sharp minds working with him. You don't think he's trying to bypass or, or compete with Bitcoin? Can I put it that uh, way? No, no. And he's also trying not to compete with the US government because that's why the DM rollout got delayed in 2019. <laughs> he learned his lesson. DM is not a new project. It was there since 2019, but there was a congressional hearing and a lot of people complained about this. That <laughs> yes, I remember, I remember him being in that congressional hearing. Right, right, right. But the good thing about this is now, can you see Facebook? There's, there's, there's like an, a, a, a payment ecosystem there. And, and you can say now, Jeff, uh, like now we, we, we probably put the the uh, crypto address for donations, right? But you can't do that on YouTube. But in the future, Jeff can say, hey, you can put it in my wallet. How do we do that, Jeff? Yeah, click up there, that, that, that thing. No, I won't be telling them how to do that because I wouldn't have a bloody clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, somebody might provide a link for me. Somebody <laughs> might provide a link. Angel will provide a link. It'll be like gaming. You can tip the guy, right? This is okay. Yeah, yep. this needs to be a big tip, but you know, all the small little tips go through, and that's why you will have this age of very young content creators uh, making a lot of money. In fact, before the uh, Roblox uh, Roblox uh, uh, listing, they had interviewed several content creators. This this girl is only about twenty five, and she makes one million US a year, and that's on a game. When you say on a game, you, yeah, you, you don't, you don't mean the, it's a she world famous world day, girl yeah. game. Yeah. So while Jeff, while you teach, uh, while, uh, while, 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 while you teach uh, Forex, I'm going to be playing a game where the Tassie devil is looking for the uh, Tasmanian tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, if we ever find him, that'd be awesome. I know. That's why we can create that game, right? So I think the, the world is really about to change. It really is, is, is going to change in, in, in a lot. And then we had Amazon uh, with a rumor that uh, they were going to allow Bitcoin payments. It turned out to be fake news. But this is why I say, guys, this is why the Bitcoin thing is very manipulated. And that is why I say now the thing wants to go up. Let me show you something. This is so interesting. Let's look at CoinDress here. Amazon, no, we have no plans to accept Bitcoin. Uh, Elon Musk, Tesla holds 1.3 billion position in Q2. This is bad news. No, this is bad news. Plus, there was a case yesterday on Tether. The US Department of Justice will be investigating Tether, which is the stable, one of the biggest cryptos around. That is totally bad news. But look at what happened to Bitcoin. Oh, it went up on fake news and it's just like, Staying there, right? So this is this is the thing in Bitcoin. So it looks like that this Bitcoin and, and of course Ethereum will all follow. It's just looking for an excuse to go up. Whereas you saw before this, do you know that this 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 thing going down came on the back of some good news from PayPal? It doesn't matter. If it wants to go down, it's going down. And this was driven by fake news, but it hasn't gone down here yet, right? You're right. It, it seems like he wants to use this to defend the line, and that's that's cool. As that's actually as very interesting news. because yeah. if that news was not fake, yeah, then that would have just gone ballistic. Because correct, Amazon correct. man, if Amazon actually said that, can you imagine? Uh yeah, 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 and 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 but but they say they're looking at it. So they might come up with another announcement, right? But wow. yeah, regardless of that, if you look at this, it's like this is such a well-defined channel, you know? It's like that news was foretold. And that's why I told in Crypto Moon last night that no, no, this is not going to go above here. This is like foretold. <laughs>
Somebody, that chart looks like something I could trade, actually. I know, because it's like, it's foretold, right? Mm. It doesn't matter. The only thing is, what, let me tell you that one fine day in the future, and I put it here that I think this, this whole rally starts in mid-August or, or somewhere else. One fine day, uh, again, we don't know what's going to happen, but we know that it may look like this or whatever and grew like this. There will be another news here. It doesn't matter if it's big or small, just that the fact that this goes up, there will be some news here. Uh, right. <laughs> you saw here private. Yeah, you saw here this going down because despite PayPal good news, okay, despite, despite. And you see this going up here on Amazon fake news. Not totally fake, but they, it was not what people said what it was. So that shows you that, you know, it's, it's, it's just one thing to go up now, but it probably needs to prove itself by hanging around here. Not, not probably not going around here, but hanging around is good and going up. And while, and while this is the crypto market, of course, the NFTs are doing a different kind of thing. So now you see two things now, I think in the future, because uh, to be fair, Amazon said they're going to take a look at it. I'm sure Amazon is going to come out with another news that is not fake. But this is now driven by Facebook. So I think that's good. Interesting. Do we know where the, or, or the source of that fake news? Was it an entity? Where's um, that? <laughs> it was the British. <laughs> the British. And the Ash. British. We have had enough with them with all their tabloids, okay? But they did great. They did well. It was a British publication. And they said, we have insider news. <laughs> what? Who were the British Foundation, by the way? <laughs> let me see. This is so funny, you know. It, it, let me see this. Let me see this. Oh boy! <laughs> Probably Ash knows. I was looking for Ash. Today. Hey, you guys gave this news. Look, CTAM, which is distributed free on the London Underground. <laughs> oh Jesus! Okay. <laughs> something that's in the free. Look at this. Look at this, Jeff. Unnamed insider. My God. And the market reacted to that. I wow. think the market was manipulated to react to that because let, 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 let's do it, Jeff. Reality PayPal was real news. Why in the world is the market reacting to something? from London on a free paper citing a single unnamed insider. Yeah, it it's not, make, is it? It's it not, really right? Isn't. It's no. just wanted to go up. Oh, okay. We will follow this news. We'll follow this news. Fine. So now that they got us out of the woods there, it will be very critical to defend this and probably go this. And if it can go break up here, then it will be three months uh, distribution, three months accumulation that meets that that's kind of symmetrical so that's good i like symmetry like symmetry. like symmetry right so so this is this is why so this is very different well, what i find is that this is very different from the nfts because nfts are real nfts are based on something more real i i know people would find this surprising but in reality nfts are based on something real like revenues and all that play to earn and all that that's the rage now. There's a lot of coming play to earn gains where you actually get something. So while NFTs are driven by uh, the old school type of having revenue, cryptos are still, well, when cryptos want to go up, they go up. When they want to go down, they go down. And that's why I, I said I will be looking at this space more because this is more understandable. And even if you don't, even if you don't, or you don't manage to mint or do this, you can always play the game and earn the crypto, and that's fine. Or earn the NFT, and that's fine. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, how do you keep up with this, man? Oh, you got to read a lot. You got to read a lot. You got to follow a lot of news shows, and yeah, just go to the website to see what's happening. But yeah, this is, this is the tough part in crypto because things change so fast. Mm. And then you know what? This is uh, July, right? Uh, this is July. Now, uh, I will remind you again in January, February. By the time we come to January in February, it will look very different from what it looks now. 
because I think during this next rally of the uh, DeFi and also NFTs, you are going to see many new things that we, we cannot even imagine now. We, we just can't. Well, wow. okay, so uh, we've got to get the Tassie devil chasing the Tassie tiger. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to get and, the Tassie devil get, chasing the Tassie tiger. But, and get that minted somehow. Yeah. Yeah, that's minted somehow. But the good thing is that Elon Musk, the most hated person in crypto, uh, didn't sell. See, he held, he holds about 1.3 billion, so he didn't lie to us. He's not a liar. He really this time. Did not sell. Yeah, <laughs> this time he's not a liar because last time people were concerned because people, he said that what happens last time, he said that uh, this, he said that he sold some and that caused the panic, but he wanted to test the liquidity, which is fair. Yep. Right. That means if the company bought a bunch of crypto, can it get rid of this amount, which is quite a big amount, but it's, it's not 1.3 billion, probably about what, 10 million or whatever, and just get rid of it. But people assumed that because he was going to do that, he was going to sell the rest, and people just sold it off. But yeah, he told the truth, man. He, yeah, yeah, see that. What, what happened? What 10%, happened when he did that? There it is, ten percent. Yeah, ten. It went down. That it went down ten percent. Yeah, it went down. He sold ten percent of the position, right? So he purchased one point five billion. He let go like hundred fifty to two hundred million. Yeah. So did he did? And what happens with with this exchange or this market? Does uh, he then get it, if he if fast. he unloads that is he going to get the is he going to get the right price or is he going to get slipped into a, a I, lower I think price? He got, he got the he got the price that that he wanted, but people assumed that he was selling all. He wasn't, so he was just still holding it. And what he was saying was that he is only considering for uh, Tesla to again may to accept crypto again only if the Bitcoin mining is fifty percent uh, clean energy which it looks like it is now. So going uh, forward, uh, don't look at the market, but look at the news flows. We are waiting for Amazon to have something more solid on Bitcoin. And I think the next one is of course, Elon Musk and Tesla, that uh, Bitcoin is indeed 50% because they, this, his selling here drove a lot of people out of China into the US. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that was positive for the US and on the NFT side, uh, we're waiting for Facebook. And then we are also waiting for probably more. And I think we talked about Ash last week, right? Roblox and also Fortnite. So there's your two worlds. Pick the world that you want to be in. <laughs> I'm happy where I am. <laughs> But, but I've got course, to... you know, yeah, if, if you want to go into something really, really risky, but can make a lot of money, I think it's NFTs, but they will, most of them will go to zero. But if you can get somewhere here and get out, it, it looks very, very good. Because oh, that part, know, that we, part we, concerns me. Yeah, that part concerns you. Yeah, because we don't know which one are going to make it. But uh, NFTs are like where crypto was in 2016. They're, they're still like. We don't know where we're going to go. <laughs> yeah, look, it, it's the unprepared or ill-prepared yes. road ki roadkill that really, yes. Uh, yes. It, it annoys me, you know, it really yes. gets to. And also NFTs now, if you see, it's being used in uh, even IPOs, right? Because I told you guys about deeper network. And if you hold the deeper uh, tokens now, you can actually get the deeper IPO, which is good because the deeper token did not go down even during this crash. So that's why I said NFTs is easier to think like you and me think, you know, there's value there. Mm. <laughs> then Jeff, PayPal came out with good news. How come you went down? Amazon gave fake news and you go up. What's happening? Just it's hard for us to understand. <laughs> well, once you get a handle on that yeah. and once you, <laughs> once you understand that, Apples ain't apples all the time. And, I, know, uh, I know, but this is, yeah. you know, like that's, Dapper Labs is raising money and, and flow is, is, hasn't gone down by a lot. Flow, the worst that it did, that it went down on this token was 50 times. The worst, the worst, the, the worst, the worst, the worst dump. 50, it's still 50 X. Huh. Because it's tied to something real. 
This is tied to money being poured into Dapper Labs because it is going for listing on the NASDAQ. Same thing for deeper networks. So now we know that if you guys are all confused about this side, go on this side, find these type of tokens, you'll be okay. And maybe you can hit the Tasmanian tiger here on the NFT, which makes you into a millionaire. I don't know. Maybe. You just never know. <laughs> Guide me, somebody. <laughs> here's, here's my hand. <laughs> it's the only way I'm going to get anywhere, that's for sure. Because I don't have, and like John's spending two hours, as he said, per day. And that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, but, but it is. I mean, for John, it's more important because for John now, like he has a music business. I think his task now is hot. Facebook can become his home. Facebook can become his metaverse. Let me tell you, in the next one or two years, that Facebook will be very, very different. Not only can he serve face to face in his home, he can also do, I think, something very good in terms of virtual reality like Oculus X to the world. And then it's easy to charge things. And that's why we were talking about the John coin. It's going to be very different two years from now. But the good thing is it is already starting. Well, wow. go, John. Yeah. Go, boy. Go, boy. Get it. <laughs> um, yeah, look, uh, it just blows me away. Every time every time you and, – and it's every second week, there's something bloody new. I know. It, it doesn't stand still for five minutes. Yeah, and, and I think that's why now that uh, in Crypto Moon 3, we're going to start probably in August, I, I finally have a framework, you know, okay, how are we going to do this? Uh, and, and, and my idea is very simple. The best way to do this, let's forget the moon for a while because the moon will come as a consequence of us getting these things into our lives. That's it. You know, for example- yeah, look, I, yeah. I, I can totally say I need to, Shukri. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be on the shoulder of giants yeah. or goats, right? <laughs> But again, to make it easier, just understand that there are two worlds. And if you're confused, that's okay. Ask which world is this? Like, uh, which planet is this? Because, you know, there seems to be like two planets nowadays. All right. I'll watch this replay 25 times until I get it right. Cool, 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 cool. You see, so <laughs> hey, listen, before, before yeah, look at that. Sorry? See, he's already been uploading daily short music lessons type videos each day. Yeah, now, he's onto it. Yeah. Now, let me tell you that what Facebook has now, and, and I think it will expand in the future because there is something called a face. Was it, it's not a Facebook group. So it's a Facebook page, right? There is something called upvo upvoting, you know? If there are enough upvotes on the Facebook page, I think John can make money from the page and soon it will be in DM. So okay. So that's yeah. it's the same as YouTube, right? That's the same as YouTube. Yeah. It's, it's, it's coming already. It's already coming. <laughs> wow good on you john 56 in a row i was born in 56 there's something about that number <laughs> some people wish it never happened i'm sure mate thank you so oh, look before you go before you go yeah. um july august 8th or 9th right yeah is it's um long, is um, the release of the yeah. atw charity coin yeah no it's not atw <laughs> don't say that <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. That was wrong. It is the charity coin by Wish. Yeah, it, guys, no relationship to ATW here. ATW, as of now, does not have a coin. Okay, oh. my apologies. <laughs> tell, me, tell me the entity under which this coin is being released then. Uh, it's under Wish, 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 Wish Finance. Wish. Wish finance, okay. Yeah, and, and, and it's a charity that's meant to do good. And, and what problems is solved with it? It's solved my problem because I, I don't like giving to charities because I don't know what happens to the money. And even I've been following on Facebook, I'm quite concerned when, when you people come to me to charities, but then I read that the guy who uh, is collecting charity for person A now says that you know he's collecting charity because he wants person A to go to a university and that's fine. Now, person A suddenly has a scholarship. Uh, what happened to my money? Yeah. No, I like it. I'll be part of it. I'm, I'm absolutely part of it. That's good. Great idea. And 
not just for that reason. I think it's it's because we can probably know that uh, yes, where it's going, but that all that is donated is going to that place. I think that's yeah, a really yeah. good. That, that's I a really think, good. Point. I think the model is this: it is diamonds. It's called provenance. Because if the diamond comes from source A, it's going to supposed to be more expensive. And then that's very important. Where is the money from? It also allows <laughs> to... Uh, uh, see, even your dog loves it. It also Angus. allows us to solve uh, the issue <laughs> of uh, money laundering and all that. Because you know the source. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all, all on board. Love it. Mate, thank you so much as always. Thanks, um, I, I understood, I think, about 5% of it, but I'll watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch the replay 25 times and I really appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. We'll catch up soon, eh? Okay, see you, bye. Oh, actually, won't see you next week. Um, Lloyd will be, Lloyd will be okay. with you next week. Okay, cool, cool. But hopefully I'll catch up um, some other time. I'll call you indiscriminately like I did the oh, other day oh, and oh, got do. absolutely yeah. nowhere. <laughs> Have a good one, mate. Uh, yeah, bye. Okay, there he goes. Uh, the inimitable Shukri. And I've got a screen somewhere to share, but where is it? Oh, uh, this is not working. Sorry. I'll catch up in a minute. Uh, that goes there. That goes there. And we're going to share screen number that one, I think. Guys, hopefully you can see my um, Euro Aussie chart at this point. I'm really hopeful that's the case. And if not, I need to know. Uh, I've lost the chats. I don't know why this is so cumbersome at the moment, but it is. Okay. Uh, only, <laughs> only four, Lewis, but I've got them all over the shop at the moment. I've, I've reversed all the positions and it's just throwing me out. Chart okay. Thanks, Paul. All right, um, we're just about done, guys, but briefly I'll go through and wow. see if we need to do anything. Euro Aussie, no, uh, you know the story there. Euro pounds, daily pivot as we expected. Hopefully that's going to come off that and drive us back into profit. Um, maybe we should have traded that on the 30-minute time frame. Mate. Kiwi Swissy, uh, not yet triggered. Uh, I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if tomorrow this candle looks pretty much as it is and it hasn't taken us in, then I'll probably move my entry down to here because it'll still be the potential higher low that I'm looking for and it'll be a much better bar to trade anyway. That's Kiwi Swissy. Uh, Euro Aussie we've spoken about. Euro Pound we've spoken about. That's about all we need to speak. Oh, no, Pound, I suppose. The pound has come back to the daily pivot like I suspect a few of these have and that's to be expected. Um, hopefully we get the bounces that we're looking for off all of those, in particular the euro pound uh, because that was my main stay of the week. And really, guys, that's about it. Aussie Kiwi. Yeah, I didn't mention that earlier, but... I was looking for that to come back into the range as it has on the daily and on the four hour. I really looking for a higher low in here. Look at that. I'll point it out to you if you haven't seen it. Uh, insert shapes, rectangle. Let me put that back where it belongs. Uh, let me go. It's probably a tighter range that I'm going to put in, but. There you go. Back inside the range, we're looking for a higher low. It may go too fast for us, but a higher low on any chart would be good here. I uh, don't see any other way there. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can do a retest here. Pick your trade line. Could be any one of these. But the break and the retest would be interesting. Um, high of the day. Not an issue because it's a new high. And I haven't <laughs> haven't told you that rule. Maybe I have. I don't trade into the high of the day unless it is a new high. So if this high was down here, I wouldn't be trading into it. But because it is now a new high, I'm happy to do that. So I'll retest here. Red-bodied bar, entry above there. 
TP1 before the weekly pivot, and away you go. I think that's it, guys. Uh, I don't have anything else at the moment apart from what we've already been through. Um, no, that's it. Sort of a breakout on uh, on euro dollar long in H four H one. Yeah, too late, I think, mate. Probably. Let me have a look. Oh, come back here. Yeah, it looks like a false breakout to me, doesn't it? Up here at the moment, anyway. H one. Let me get rid of all these lines. Okay, so let me identify the range accurately first. All right, there's a tight, tight range in here, probably the one. You could expand it up to there ish. In there somewhere looks okay. I was happy with where it was. Either way, you've come off the top and you are now looking at a pivot test yum. That's great. I think a, a, a candle back to here, I'd be more than happy to trade that down to the bottom of the range. Thereafter, God knows, look for the bounce off the bottom. I think just range trade that at the moment. I don't know if there's any reason to, uh, to think anything's going to change anytime soon, is there? We oh we got fed we got fed this week. Pretty sure we do. Uh, let me have a look at that. We do. Okay. So yes, uh, I am looking for the euro to range prior to the. What are the Aussie numbers today? Didn't look at that. Uh, that's overnight. All right, we've got Aussie numbers in the morning. Interesting. We've got FOMC overnight tomorrow night. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy with the euro ranging at the moment. So um, if you've got a, a lower high to the bottom, then try and trade the bounce back up with a higher low. That, that'd be where I'd be going with that. Uh, so no, I don't have a... Euro dollar long. I, I don't have a long here at the moment. I can see where you're coming from, from a candle pattern or a, or a slingshot pattern point of view. Um, but I'd like to trade that from down here, not from up here. So, yeah, my analysis is still the same. Looking for a lower high to the bottom. And once we get to the bottom, looking for a higher low to the top. I think that's the better trade. I'd have to say that, Lewis, if we do get down here, I think it's a better trade to get up to here and look for the higher low. Once back inside the range, absolutely, I'd go with that, go with you on that one. But at the moment, I just wouldn't be looking to trade that more. Wait a little bit. Got a bit of a, it's, it's on a great level. I, I agree with all of that. But for me to trade that long now, it's either down here and, and get a false break of support or break and retest. So get out of the range and retest. That would be the way I'd be looking. Untested monthly pivot looks inviting, doesn't it? I'm with you in, uh, in directional bias. But off the bottom there would be a great place, I think. All right, guys, that is it from me for the day. Uh, back tomorrow, of course, at the very same time. Lloyd will be back in. He'll give us an update on his trades that look fantastic at the moment. Pound Aussie and Aussie Swissy. The former long the ladder, sorry, yeah, the former long the ladder short. They're looking great. Um, so I'm sure you're going to have a great month with, uh, with Lloyd once that starts next week. Ash, uh, not in tomorrow, but Ainsley will be. And uh, we can have a look at a goal chart for a change. I don't look at goal charts too often, but we'll see how we go. All right. Have fun, guys. Uh, have a wonderful Tuesday evening, and we look forward to catching up with you uh, tomorrow at the very same time. So have a good one.